We know from Section 86 of the 1996 Constitution, that the President is elected by the National Assembly. But what about traditional leaders? Who even elects the royal family? Is it the community, ancestors or the constitutional court? Customary law is the written and unwritten rules, which have developed from the customs and traditions of communities. The codified customary law is often criticized for not being accurate, because it confuses the real principles of unwritten customary law. It leaves out some of the principles, and areas of unwritten customary law, and it also gives the impression that there is only one system of customary law. Nevertheless, for many people in South Africa, Customary law is the most important law in their lives. Welcome back to the Jurisprudence Channel. The home for summarized case laws, legal definitions and where legal procedures are outlined. We cannot emphasize enough on how much we appreciate your engagement. Please continue liking, commenting and sharing our videos with your friends or colleagues. If this is your first encounter, and you love watching law content, please subscribe, like and comment. We will be very happy to have you in our circle. In this video, we shall be summarizing a male primogeniture case. One of the most essential case law within the field of law of succession and customary law. Male primogeniture rule is a customary law which states that only the elder legitimate son can inherit the deceased estate, in exclusion of the other siblings. In this case, the dispute was between Muz Shalubana, the daughter of Chief Fofosa Nwamatwa, and Mr. Nwamatwa, Chief Fofosa's nephew, the son of Richard Nwamatwa. Chief Fofosa died without a male heir, and at that time, succession to the chieftainship was governed by the principle of male primogeniture. Therefore, Muz Shalubana, Hossi Fofosa's eldest daughter, was not considered for the position. Instead, Hossi Fofosa's younger brother, Richard, succeeded him as chief. The dispute in this case arose following the death of Chief Richard. During the reign and with the participation of Chief Richard, the royal family met and solidly resolved to confer chieftainship on Muz Shalubana. In the presence of the chief magistrate and 26 witnesses, Chief Richard acknowledged that Muz Shalubana was the heiress to the chieftainship. Later, the royal council accepted and confirmed that Chief Richard would transfer his powers to Muz Shalubana. On the same day, the tribe held a meeting under Chief Richard, and it was resolved that, in accordance with the usages and customs of the tribe, Muz Shalubana would be appointed as chief. Two years later, Chief Richard wrote a letter which, though not clear, it was accepted by the High Court and the Supreme Court of Appeal as a withdrawal of his support for Muz Shalubana's chieftainship. After Chief Richard had died, the royal family met again and confirmed that Muz Shalubana would become chief. With the support of all relevant authorities, Muz Shalubana was again pronounced chief. In spite of everything, Mr. Nawamatwa interdicted an inauguration ceremony scheduled for Muz Shalubana, by the Provincial Department of Local Government and Housing. Mr. Nawamatwa proceeded to institute proceedings in the High Court, seeking a declarator that he, and not Muz Shalubana, is heir to the chieftainship and thus entitled to succeed his father, Chief Richard. The High Court and thereafter the Supreme Court of Appeal held in Mr. Nawamatwa's favor. Both courts reasoned that even if the traditions, and customary law of this tribe, currently permit women to succeed as chiefs, Mr. Nawamatwa, as the eldest child of Chief Richard, is entitled to succeed him. Applicants argued that customary law is dynamic and adaptable, and that the only constraints are those imposed by the Constitution, and applicable legislation in terms of Section 211 2 of the Constitution. Furthermore, they submitted that the tribe was acting well within their power, under customary law, to amend their customs, and traditions to reflect, changed circumstances. 
In support of this, they submitted that in foreign jurisdictions, other communities have adapted their succession laws to move away from male primogeniture. The respondent argued that the question before the court, is not only of gender but also lineage. In addition to the fact that, it is not the custom, that a woman may be a chief, it was not permissible to elect Ms. Shalubana to the chieftainship, ignoring the traditional family line. The respondent also argued that, any discrimination that may exist in male primogeniture, relating to succession is fair, since allowing Ms. Shalubana to succeed as chief would result in the next chief, not being fathered by a chief, which would lead to confusion and chaos in the community. Similarly, he argued that any discrimination against Mos Shalubana would not be unconstitutional, being based on a reason that is acceptable, fair, reasonable and justifiable. Finally, the respondent argued that the royal family did not have the authority to develop the customs and traditions of the tribe, so as to outlaw gender discrimination as it relates to chieftainship succession. He argued that, the royal family's role is only to recognize, and confirm a chief. Similarly, he argued that the royal family did not have the authority to restore the position of traditional leadership, to the house from which it was removed, by reason of pre-constitutional gender discrimination. The constitutional court explained that, the issue to be decided was whether the community has the authority, to restore the position of traditional leadership, to the house from which it was removed due to gender discrimination, even if this discrimination occurred prior to the coming into operation of the constitution. The court reasoned that the traditional authorities had the power to act as they did for the following reasons. First, if as in the view of the High Court, the traditional authorities had only narrow discretion in matters of customary law, it followed that no other body in the community had more power in this regard, since no other body in the community had more power than those authorities. This meant that nobody in the customary community would have the power to make constitutionally driven changes in traditional leadership. The court considered that a narrow discretionary view of traditional authorities would result in a situation where they would have to approach the courts before a woman could be installed as chief, unless there was no other heir, or the male heir was unfit to rule. The court stated that this was not only undesirable, it was contrary to the constitution. The court reiterated that section 211 2, specifically provides for the right of traditional communities to function subject to their own system of customary law, including amendment, or repeal of laws. The court stated that a community must be empowered to act so, as to bring its customs into line with the norms and values of the constitution. Any other result would be contrary to section 211, to, and would be disrespectful of the close bonds between a customary community, its leaders and its laws. The court contended that if the traditional authority has only those powers accorded it by such a narrow view, it would be contrary to the constitution and frustrate the achievement of the values in the Bill of Rights. Therefore, the court held that they had the authority to act on constitutional considerations, in fulfilling their role in matters of traditional leadership. The court stated that the value of recognizing the development by a traditional community of its own law, is not in this case overshadowed by the need for legal certainty or the protection of rights. The court held that, in view of their conclusion, it was not necessary to consider the argument that, the decision should be seen as a step to address the consequences of past discrimination under section 9.2 of the Constitution. It concluded that the decisions of the High Court and Supreme Court of Appeal, that the traditional authorities lacked the power in question was incorrect. Accordingly, Mr. Nawamatwa has no vested right to the chieftainship. Thank you for watching thus far, if this was not a waste of your time, please like, comment and share this case with your colleagues. Take care, we are forever your all buddy. Until the jury do us apart.